So your agent suggested you offer more to get a property that you really love. But if an agent's pay is based off a percentage of the final sale price of a property, isn't it in the agent's best interest for their buyer to overpay for the property? What's my incentive to really fight for my buyers to get the best price on a purchase if that means I earn less money? I run across this question from time to time in real estate message boards or news articles, and really it's a very fair question. And I'm gonna give you my 100% honest answer right now, so stay tuned. What's up? It's Danny Cassis, your full service real estate agent with eXp Realty. First of all, I'm totally open to pull back the curtain on anything uh, real estate industry related. So if you're curious about anything in the real estate world that you're not clear on, or you feel like is shrouded in mystery because our secret society of real estate agents wants to keep its clutches on the public, just leave a comment below and I will make a video for it. All right, so I know that we're conditioned to protect certain information about our pay and our finances, but I run my own real estate business and since I earn my income working for people who wanna buy and sell properties, those people, you, you should have an understanding of how I get paid, so I don't really try to keep it a secret. Now, if you're totally unfamiliar with how agents get paid, which might be the case because nobody likes to talk about their pay, the fee that a buyer's agent collects is actually paid by the seller of the property and it's already baked into the list price. So let's say you're a buyer and you love a property and you want to make a full asking price offer, but your agent suggests that you offer $10,000 above asking. Seems a little shady, right? Because maybe he's just trying to boost his paycheck with a higher sale price. Totally understandable to think that. First of all, I owe every single one of my clients a fiduciary duty, which means I have a legal responsibility to act in the best interest of the client, whether buyer, seller, or both. But fiduciary duty aside, what is the math on that extra $10,000 sale price for my paycheck? Well, I actually penciled it out, and after my own fees, taxes, and other nickels and dimes, that $10,000 for you translates to about $120 for me. Now, that's not exactly life-changing money in 2023, and I can honestly say that uh, keeping a lifelong relationship with every one of my clients, past, present, and future, is worth much more than 120 bucks or even 10 times that amount. So why would I ever suggest that you offer more than list price? Well, the only reason is if that's what I believe it would take for you to get your offer accepted on a property that you love. Remember, it's always your choice to decide how much you're willing to offer for a property, but also remember that negotiations are my bread and butter, and I'm gonna leverage every bit of information that I can gather into getting you the best result possible. And sometimes the best result is paying a little bit extra to make sure that you get the property that you really want. I never want anyone to regret missing out on an opportunity, especially because of a lack of trust that probably really just comes down to being afraid to communicate your true concerns. And that's why I'm never afraid to share things like how or how much I get paid when we work together. So that's it for today. Like I said, I'm pretty much an open book on this stuff. So if you're curious to learn more about the behind the scenes real estate industry stuff, just leave a comment below. I will make a video about whatever it is that you wanna know because chances are other people wanna know, but they're afraid to ask. As always, I hope you have the best day ever and a great weekend. And I hope to talk to you soon.